Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a continuation of a previous video I did on Nuxt and Drizzle. What we're going to do here, oh, and for those who don't know, Drizzle is a type safe TypeScript based ORM that you can integrate into your Nuxt application. And so that's what I've done in a previous video. Link is included below. You can go back to the video and check out what I've done. You might also want to go back just to get a little bit of context to uh, what we're going to do today. I will cover a couple of the topics of what we covered in the first video where they relate to supporting what we're trying to do this time around, but I'm not going to do a complete rehash of the code that's already been written. So like I said, we're going to integrate next off. So let's get over to next off. But before that, let's make sure that you like and subscribe, share with your friends and let people know what's going on in the channel. Okay, so here we are in um, Nuxt Auth. I kind of got confused trying to figure out how to find the Nuxt Authentication Package because I first I searched for Nuxt Auth and then it recommended this solution by Sidestream and then it recommended another solution and I settled on this one because this one, the documentation says that it's built on top of Next Auth, which has been around for a while, has a lot of stars, um, has been kind of road tested already. And so that's why I decided to go with this one. Um, I'll also include a link below to next auth so you can take a look at it. But the basic idea is the auth handler functions exactly the same way as it does in next. I mean, in next. Okay, so let's start by installing the packages that we need. So uh, I'm going to try my best to follow the documentation um, so that you have some context when you're trying to build your own solution also. All right, so we're going to install this. Okay, and what does it say to do next? Uh, as a peer dependency with all packet manager except npm. So, but that since it's what we have, and now let's do an npm install. npm install minus d. Hmm. Should I do a minus d? Let's go back. Now we're just going to install it. Okay, so now that's installed. Uh, we already have next three, so we're good. Quick start. We need to add the module in our configuration. So let's do that. And then they just hop right into an auth handler for your um, authentication provider. We are going to use a, we are not going to use a GitHub provider. We're going to use a credentials provider. So uh, it's easier to, I believe there's an example of a credentials provider here. We can kind of hop to, let's see, Nux auth example code. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So what they have done here is if you look inside of server.api.auth, you need to create this path exactly as it is. And then inside of here, they have all the information for a uh, provider. We are just going to do, do the credentials provider, which is a username and password. And then we're going to integrate that with the um, database that we've already created and will encrypt the password and kind of create supporting functions for that. So let's start first by creating this uh, file that we need. And let's go into API. Let's create a new folder. Auth. And then let's create a file inside of that folder. And that is what it needs to look like. So now we have our auth file set up. And then that now let's kind of, you know, use some precision here and just pull out the stuff that we need. Let's just start by copying the whole. I'll copy the whole thing. And then we still got a lot going on here. There's a lot of comments in uh, a lot of comments included here also. Let's kind of save some of these things. Let's get back. All right, we're not going to do the GitHub provider, which is the kind of the go-to, but we don't need any of that. Um, this credentials uh, this credentials provider has a default user interface for a login page. We're not going to create a custom login page at this point. We just want to get it working for this video, and we'll kind of do some customization later. Um, 
So basically, whatever you put in here it will appear in the screen. So they have username and password. So we'll just leave that for now. So let's just remove these comments. And then for authorization, this is where we'll use our own code. And so what will happen is we'll get the credentials passed in. And then based on the credentials, we need to return a user object if we're successful or return a null if we're not successful. So in here is where we're going to connect to um, API routes that we will create um, in the application. So let's save this. Let's comment this out. Actually, let's we'll get rid of some of this stuff. We'll leave this. Um, we'll leave some of this in here because what we want to do is let's just test that it actually works in our app before we start customizing it. And we'll verify that it works using their little um, credential method. All right, so let's start up my server. Okay. Let's open up the debugger so we can, if you need to poke around. Put that down here in the bottom. Let's kind of zoom in a bit. All right, now. Oh, the other thing I need to do is we need to turn on the middleware. Like I said, we need to get the middleware turned on. So let's hop over to our next config. And inside of our config down here, we add a new property. And then there are some options that we have here. And the one, uh, sorry. And the one that we need is we're going to enable global middleware. And so what that will do is by default, all pages are protected, meaning that all pages require a session for you to access them. And then what we'll do is we'll just go through and we'll pick out the pages that we um, don't want to require um, uh, authentic authentication or valid session for. And so then also the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of get rid of this app view and we're going to use the pages approach. And so let's rename this. Put this underscore here and then create a pages directory. And then inside of here, we'll just create a basic index page index.view and then a template. Welcome to my app. All right. And then now if we go back and refresh, I get a hard refresh, empty cache, hard refresh. Uh, it looks like it's still looking for the app view. Let's try rebuilding. All right, and you can see now it didn't go to the index page, it went to the login page. And this login page is created by the information that we set right here. We set our credentials to say it's username and password. Those are the credentials that we need and those are the credentials that I get passed in here. And as you can see, it's only the user that it's looking to match is this John Smith. So if we enter this username J Smith and password Hunter2, we should get authenticated. So let's do that. J Smith, Hunter 2. We are authenticated and you can see we're on my uh, page. And then there's also a bunch of hooks or composables that you have access to. So let's take a look at what those are. And we'll go to our index page. Let's put our script section in. And let's import this guy. 
And then now let's go up to our template and just kind of show what we're getting. The data on the authenticated user is going to be here inside of data. And then status is whether they're authenticated or not. We we don't want uh, we don't want the token and we don't really care about the providers. The important things that we're interested in is the status and the data. So let's just do this data. Let's go back to our page. Refresh it. And why are we getting new sessions is not defined? Let's format this document. I guess I do need to actually import it, which I didn't think I would need to. Actually, I realized that the documentation use session has been renamed to use auth in this version. So there should be use auth. And so now let's see what we get. And that's what we're getting. All right. So you're seeing I'm getting my status of authentication. I'm getting the name Jay Smith. Um, the image avatar that was associated with it and then the expiration date for the session. And then I get the status that the user, um, uh, that the user is um, authenticated. So let's add a sign out on there so we can make sure we get them signed out appropriately. Is there a sign out on here? So let's add a sign out to make sure we get the user signed out appropriately. Um, and so we have our sign out function. And we'll just put a simple button down here. And let's now see what we got in our page. So we have our sign out. And then in sign out, it should redirect me back to sign in. So let's click sign out. And now it's brought me back to sign in. And then you see I can't. I can't get back to my index page until I sign in again and then everything's here and then I sign out. So the other thing that last thing we want to do before we start to integrate um, the drizzle back end to kind of put the user in a database and everything is let's show how we can. Um, what do I want to show? We want to show. I've showed the login. I've showed the sign out. Uh, let's just show how the routes are protected because that's the other thing is how the API routes are protected based on a user being authenticated. And so what we can do is let's create a API route to test. Well, what do we have? We let's use an existing API route. Let's do just our get users route. That should give us a list of all the users. And so what we're going to do is we can check for the session here and um, we can check for the session inside of our API routes. But to check for the session, we need to make sure that we are in our application that we are passing the cookies along to the server. So let's give that a go. So what we're going to do is we will let's go to our we only have one page and that's our index page. So inside of our index page here, let's make an API call without the cookie and then with the cookie. And then we'll make the check inside of our inside of our API route. And like I said, we're going to use our users get which should give us all of our users. So first, let's try that without the we're going to not put any authentication on it, not check for any session, we're just going to make the call to show that we can get the data. So let's do that first. And so I think the easiest way to do that is say const data I believe it's just API slash users. And that should give us our data. And then let's just, so we can show we're getting data. Let's put it up here on the screen. Actually, let's just copy this one. And we can say users. 
and then let's change this to users and let's change this to users save this all right and now let's see what we get so you can see here we've got our list of users hold on Okay, so we have our two users and we were able to make the call because I'm not checking for any authentication inside of my users get. So let's put a check in here to look for a session. Drop this code and if you look at this code, just get server session. Let's add it. And let's get this import right. We can do this bang auth. And then we get this and so now what will happen is if we pass the cookie, you'll get an authenticated session and we go through and make the call. If not, we'll return the status of unauthenticated. So as you can see, um, I added the session information here and we're getting the session information. But I thought that I needed to pass the cookie to get the session information, which is kind of what's throwing me off a bit here. But apparently I don't. But we can we can verify that the session information is getting passed by now that we've added this here. If we go back to using our Thunder client like we did in in the initial video, so let's look at our Thunder client, and we want to get users. So if we just say API users, we're not going to post. We're going to get and we try to execute, we're getting the status of unauthenticated because there's no authentication information getting passed to the API. But if I go back in and I basically remove this, right, because this is the code that's making the check. And then now attempt to make the API call we get information back. So you can see that by adding this code here to get the server session, we can protect our API routes. And that's what we're gonna do for all the other API routes in the application once we get um, the whole authentication flow completely integrated. So we have now added, I think we have all the pieces in place to integrate our own API. So what's gonna to have to happen now is we need to add some new routes for, we have routes to get the user, but we need to add routes for um, login and we need to add a route for create account. And so that's what we're gonna do next.